Yes, it's tonight. Yeah. 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 Maybe we should be thrilled with this one. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Oh. That's great. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes, this one, yeah, it's very, very, very good because it really shows the miracle. It shows the miracle unfolding. Um, not many movies that, that you can clearly see it unfolding. The, the daughter in this movie, she's, she's, per good. she's particularly um, miraculous, so you can kind of keep your eye on her because she's going to, like, Holy Spirit's going to come in and take the lead through her, and then it's a convincing, you know, with the ego, with its prejudices, you know, it's interesting, this movie was 1967 and this is 2016 and when I travel around and just all oh, the seeming racial conflict, it's, I don't know, some people would say it's gotten worse <laughs> than 1967. Now it's, it's turned to riots and, and you know, <laughs> bloodshed and, it, you know, it's, but it's, it's really just another parable of, of the Spirit coming in and you know there's an underlying love. Uh, these are like two classic, legendary actors and actresses, um, Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. So these are like two all-time legends. They're like, we're up there with Jimmy Stewart and, you know, uh, all the great ones. So, but the, this parable is going to come around where they, everybody in the movie has to face their their prejudices and their hatred and their attack thoughts. And the spirit is, this is the convincing job. The spirit is convincing the mind that it's, it's much better to love than to hate. And then there's a, there's a, I think he's a priest in here too, who uh, is a golfing buddy of Spencer Tracy and he comes flying in too. Just when you think the daughter is really doing it, he just, he just laughs at uh, at the prejudices, you know, when first confronted with them. And then the more he starts to see what's going on, he he can slide a little bit into false empathy. But but the whole purpose is to take the mind way way high up into true empathy beyond any judgment, and to to let everybody completely fall in love. And this movie takes you all the way from the beginning, and then you get to see. <clears throat> what seems to be this interracial couple, this was back in 1967, <laughs> and then everybody's reaction to it, and then, uh, yeah, even even uh, Sidney Poitier is in it, he plays the the groom-to-be, and, and he has to face his own people-pleasing with his family, his own shame and everything, you know, it's all unconscious and it's all got to come up, so it's just the spirit is like pulling it out of them, it's like it goes around here, everything is like high speed, you know, it's just so fast and that's what I love about this movie, it's like the spirit is just pulling, pulling it through all of them. And, uh, and there's some really good scenes, there's one scene in there too where there's this woman who works for Katherine Hepburn, has kind of this uh, art shop and everything and, and um, she wants to go into false empathy, and Catherine Hepburn is like razor sharp, just looks her right in the eye. <laughs> it's like, it's really, end of people pleasing, you know, it's some really good scenes that could be clips for us. Like, what is no people pleasing? Here, take it away, <laughs> Catherine, you'll get to see all these classic scenes. So, okay, here we go. Fire it up, enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sure it probably did. I don't know though. That's, that's a good one. It's a teaching movie. It's always good to have it all acted out. Make it obvious. That's incredible.
So it's also good when, just like the crucifixion was a pretty extreme example, but that's, yeah, that's a good extreme teaching example. Yeah. I bet a lot of people wouldn't even watch it probably at that time. Well, it's so like... Was it in 1967? Yeah, 1967. 67? We went to the Michael Moore movie and not a lot of people were watching that. Mm. People won't go see it. You, Heard somebody wasn't in the theater said, I'm not going into that movie. Mm, right. Yeah, there's a lot of people that won't won't go see certain things. But, but it's a good one to just to, to be ready to however the symbols are used in in the plan. That that was really like a extreme teaching device. And that's good. Yeah, those are the best kind, I think. But there's no, it's not so subtle, it's just like laid out, really clear. And then Spencer Tracy, you know, he had to make a decision, so it was like a lot, you know, it's a lot of things. And when he was told, you know, that he was old and he didn't have any love anymore, that, that's what challenged him the most. Oh. You know, that's what was the thing that the Spirit, you know, kind of brought it around after that. So it was beautiful, that, yeah. You had to face that. So that's good preparation for some good extreme teaching tools. That's that's good. I was wondering, I was having this question enter my mind at some point later in the movie about if um what was if the doctor, the young, the young guy, if he hadn't, uh, you know, if that wasn't if the decision he had made that he wouldn't go through with the marriage unless they, unless her parents approved of it, and that being a private thought and a decision he made, if he hadn't have done that, you know, what like, would it have been, like, what would the movie have been like then? Like, would it have been just a lot swifter and and better and, you know, like, quicker healing? And then I was wondering, or is, the, was it maybe that that was even what seemed to be a mistake, a private thought seemed to be facilitating healing for others? And now I'm not really sure. I don't know if it, yeah, I feel like I have that question in my mind, like, I don't know if it's a meaningful question, really, but... <laughs> well, it was like, the, did you see that movie, Sliding Doors, with Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah. The, the, and does anybody have a copy of the, uh, the handbook? Oh. The handbook's got the answer uh, in it. Oh, yeah, there's one more. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know how far you got in it today, but we got through the clarity process. Back in the back, there's some good things that we, we went over this last night. But it says, um, the holy instant is a time in which you receive and give perfect communication. This means, however, that it is a time in which your mind is open both to receive and give. It is a recognition that all minds are in communication. It therefore seeks to change nothing, mm. but merely to accept everything. Mm. How can you do this when you would prefer to have private thoughts and keep them? The only way you could do that would be to deny the perfect communication that makes the holy instant what it is. 
You believe you can harbor thoughts you would not share and that salvation lies in keeping thoughts to yourself alone. For in private thoughts, known only to yourself, you think of find, you find a way to keep what you would have alone and share what you would share. And then you wonder why it is that you are not in full communication with those around you and with God who surrounds all of you together. Every thought you would keep hidden shuts communication off because you would have it so. It is impossible to recognize perfect communication while breaking communication holds value to you. Ask yourself honestly, would I want to have perfect communication and am I am wholly willing to let everything that interferes with it go forever? If the answer is no, then the Holy Spirit's readiness to give it to you is not enough to make it yours, for you are not ready to share it with Him. And it cannot come into the mind that has decided to oppose it, for the holy instant is given and received with equal willingness being the acceptance of the single will that governs all thought. So that's, that, those paragraphs are right in our little handbook, but that, that pretty much explains everything that it's really not a matter of degree, or it's really not a matter of sooner or later, but it's like, it really is a matter of would the mind experience perfect communication and it must be willing to not hide or protect any thought in order to experience that perfect communication. So it's not so much a matter of whether the movie would have come out different, it's, it's, that's the whole dilemma of the human condition. That's, that's why we have a handbook. That's why we have expression sessions every day. It's not a small thing, it's like the entire salvation of the universe depends on not keeping one thought hidden and protected from complete sharing. So that means that it, it requires absolute exposure in order to find lasting peace and then everything we talk about in the community and all the interactions and all the relationships and all the projects and all the tasks are actually absolutely essential to healing. It's not like an add-on. It's not like a, an optional thing. It's the very, very core of absolutely everything that's part of healing. So in this movie, you know, I think that was the great symbol was everyone who was under tension and pressure, which was about everyone except for the daughter, <laughs> was because she just was getting her guidance and she was happily sharing it as quickly as she could get it out. She didn't even pause and hesitate. And even when she, they were having dinner, you know, it's like the, her girlfriend was like, oh, I'm so happy for you. But why aren't you going with him? Why aren't you in the same flight? Why would you fly all that way apart? She's like, why wouldn't I? <laughs> like she looks, looks at him, John, why wouldn't I? You know, and then I'm packing and I'm, I'm going, I'm going to, she calls her mom immediately. I'm, I'm actually going to leave tonight. That wasn't even part of the original thing. So you see how, how quickly the Spirit kept, the Spirit kept interjecting you know, its spirit kept bringing everybody together and all components of the situation, even the parents that he kept in the dark, the spirit brought them right to the table. And Tilly, you know, it brought her right to the table. And it brought the, the Monsignor right to the table. 
and and even when you know Sidney Poitier was saying, "Are you going to tell? Are you, you too afraid afraid to tell it to me to the face?" He said, "Come on to the table." You know, it brought everybody to the table because. The only way that it can be seen as healed is it has you have to bring all the private aspects that seem to be separated out by time and space, bring them all together and see their falsity together. Knows better than the other, knows worse. And and more than that, it, it completely collapses linear time because if it comes if you bring everything together, you have to do it in the present moment. You can't bring it together in the past, and you can't bring it together in the future. You have to realize that there's a decision that the Holy Spirit is wanting you to make, and the only time you can make it is now. And it's it's basically saying that you can't solve a problem unless you see it exactly as it is, and then it's solved. But as long as you try to remove the problem from the solution, which is what time is, Time is trying to rem remove the problem from the solution and project it out into different people, different places, different times and different events. Even the future. You know, if you project it out to the future then it will seem like there's a healing that may come in the future. But that's not true either. It's just still trying to project the problem to time and go, oh well, eventually someday and that's not even honest. That's a lie too. That someday, someday. So yeah, this movie is like, a, I think it's like a huge invitation into the holy instant. It's like acting it out, like a theater. Like, you know, you get the example of, of how happy-go-lucky, free-flowing you can be when you hold on to no private thoughts. I mean, even at the very end, if you watch a lot of movies, you know there's this big secret, and then when the secret gets exposed, like like the he he made this condition, when it got exposed there toward the end, when Spencer Tracy was given his big spiel, all she could say was, "That's silly. That's silly." Wasn't this big show that I'm like, oh, like you know, like the formula movies. Oh, you lied to me, and now it's over. You know, that's the formula movies that play out over and over. You kept a secret from me, you thought that, you said you loved me, and then you thought that, and then she just went, and that's silly. And that's all she had to say, obviously, because then he said, shut up. <laughs> that was all she could, she could just get two words in, because he had told her, I want you to all sit and listen, but she said, that's silly. But that, that was the only, that's the pronouncement on, of truth upon illusions. That's silly. <laughs> that's that's the, the ultimate release. That's silly. And that's all that needs to be said. <laughs> Two words, that's silly. So he had some kind of secret? Yeah, he, he basically put a condition on the marriage. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. He basically said that he wouldn't get married oh, un he, unless well, he had the approval of... But he said that it was her? That she wouldn't get married? No, his secret was that he wouldn't tell her that he put the condition on the marriage that the parents had to approve. And then at the end, uh, basically Spencer Tracy says, what does it matter what we think? You know, that was the pop like the Spirit speaking through, at, at last, Spencer Tracy, when he gave his mind over, you know, what does it matter what we think? You know, if you feel what you feel. So, in other words, that's, that's the healing. What does it matter what people seem to think? Because really, it's not, people don't even think. It's one mind, and it's just projected out all these people. And it's, it's trying to play hide and seek, and it's so concerned what all these people think, and when actually that's a projection too, that's a lie. People don't even think. They're like images. They, the mind thinks. People don't think. That's just a phraseology. People don't even have thoughts. In the quantum field, there's no, there's no people. That's why no two people think 
alike or no two people see the same world is because there are no there are no two people. <laughs> you know, which is which is the, the riddle popped. So but it's so powerful when you think of that's why it's, it's so important that we have no private thoughts and no people pleasing. It's like don't hold back. Because even when you hold back your anger, your fear, your doubt, your shame, over any aspect of of anything in the cosmos, it doesn't matter what it is. You can pick, you notice that if you've got it in your mind, you've got your most shameful areas, the kind of areas that you don't want to expose publicly, that you don't want to bring to the table of the expression session, that's where you don't want to go, that's where you'll find him. The things that you're most shameful of exposing, that's where you'll find him. That's where you'll find the ego, hiding underneath it. And when you're afraid to expose those thoughts, it's when the ego's got your tongue. When the ego's put a muzzle on your mouth, then the ego is sit back in there in the mind sitting pretty going, that's right, obey me. Don't you dare expose that. Because people, what will people think? Uh -huh. What people? You see, it's all, it's all part of a scheme. The identity is so tied into what people think. And, and yet that's a projection. That's just a, a big lie too. Lisa always said she had these one-on-ones and down in Mexico and people would come in and screaming, crying, gnashing of teeth and and this the worst worst thoughts. And she said, No, I've I've been there, I've I've seen that. You know, it's like just keep it coming, just let it up like cough it up. Spit it out. Yeah, it got pretty wild down there. Like I said when someone was saying just love that, well, you know, it's all funny too. It's just allowing the anger to come up. We're almost like afraid of, you know, where we go, but it's kind of just getting really present. Right? It's like it gets worse if you try to hide it, and, you know, it's the resentment and all the stuff that gets piled up. So it's like, yeah, just this allowance to let it come up, and it's like, with this huge steam out. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you, God. And you could just that and it's not personal it's never about anybody you know it's just what's almost like the, the catalyst to bring it up mm -hmm. you know like it's necessary that's why we need to be together so that we are supporting each other in the healing yeah so it's just this continual washing and letting up opening up and trusting that and actually experiencing the gift of that Feeling the mind expand in that. That's what I always love. It's like, wow, I feel, you know, so clear. It open and then like it opens up the space for for other thoughts to come up and out. And that's when you see they go away. Yeah, the, 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 this was movie was extreme, and, and I, I'm thinking of Revolver. That's another mm -hmm. extreme movie, but you see this. It's like a huge expression of, of emotions. Jake is like a, a criminal and he's got all these thoughts in there and they're all the typical ego thoughts and intense emotions, but this Guy Ritchie did an amazing job of putting together that movie to, to compress it down into one gangster awakening movie. Because if, it's, if the gangsters can awaken, mm then anyone can. anyone can do it. You know, if Jake Green, if Jake Green, the gangster, can can have those serene eyes and and let that elevator scene, let that vicious, you know, the they go kicking and screaming and and just you get you hear all the thoughts. It just is where would you, what would you be without me? You'll be no one without me, you know, the ego voice. You'll be nothing without me, you know. Has it, everybody seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Another extreme. 
Very, very. Yeah. <laughs> 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 she says only a only a hundred times. <laughs> only a hundred times. I still actually watched it recently, most recently. So oh, I'm you did watch it recently. Yeah, I did. Oh, good. We showed that clip to the we showed that clip to our young hippie hippie friends out in California. They were all like, wow. They were. All, yeah, the, yeah. The funny thing, it's like it's the end of the retreat, so everyone's gone. So it's just like the ones that are actually there, like the friends, the group of them, yeah. and everyone is just kind of like not ready to leave. And then, uh, so we're like standing there, and they're like, so where we? Is there something happening tonight? And David was like, so what are you gonna? What do you want to do? How would you like to spend this last night? Like. Pretty much, because I was like, tomorrow we're gone, and all of them were like, we'd like to have some kind of like a real heart-opening experience <laughs> that would just blow our mind. And David was like, well, let's have dinner first, and then they'll come in and revolver <laughs> came in, and it was it was so intimate. It was like a private session. They were like going. They, they were, were getting like, Whoa, up. Whoa, stop, stop. They were like, Whoa. They were like, What just happened? It was like, What was that? It was very yeah. private, very intimate. We showed the nines. Yeah. The nines. And then clip. the nines. We showed the nines <laughs> oh. together. We showed Revolver and the like, nines. They're like, What's going on? Like, can we pause? I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> wow, like, okay, go. <laughs> and the kid was like, yeah, yeah, this. Is she said, at last, at last. She's been like a Morpheus, at last. <laughs> I can guide you, but you must do exactly as I say. <laughs> They're all like, yes, yes, tell us. <laughs> That's the kind of energy that's, that you've always prayed. Just send the ones that are that are hungry, eager, eager. eager. Oh, they were eager. Mm. They were like they couldn't wait to get. We were like going ooh, ooh, ooh and so they couldn't wait to get their organic food down that <laughs> night. Good <laughs> <laughs> old California. Yeah, oh. that was good. They were really hungry, mm. hungry for the truth. Yeah. It was mind blowing. It was and heart opening. It and was opening, like yeah. everyone just walked away. It was just like blessed, like Jake, that kind of mm. just real blessed, like So that's the question, you know, where, wherever you don't want to go, that's where you'll find him. That, and that's, we have know thyself, but we probably should put, put that somewhere, wherever you don't want to go, that is where you'll find him. Because you need something for expression <laughs> yes, sessions. <laughs> yeah, when for expression sessions yes, on a daily he's basis. One where he's never gone before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's important. Mm. That's what time is for. Yes. <laughs> it's like a prayer that would be as quick as possible. It's like that's the prayer of the heart. Let me not, let me let not delay, let me not hide thoughts. Very much like that movie Insurgent, where, what's her name? Tris, Tris. Tris, Tris has to face all of her deepest, darkest fears, everything that she's afraid of, boom, and then, then the next one, and then the next one just has to face them, face them, face them, face them all, to transcend. It's 
It's also like that Bruce Willis movie, Surrogate, you know, where the, you see the surrogates are like these bodies, that they're, they're acting out as if they're real people, as if they have real goals, real purposes and everything like this, and in the whole movie surrogate exposes that it's all, it's all a distraction. In the end he, he wants to, he wants to connect with his wife, he wants to get back into the love with his wife, and the whole surrogate scene has turned into this major distraction of avoidance. And just to see that for an instant, that everything that's perceived is part of a distractive attempt to get away from true love, true connection, true intimacy. Everything. That in the end it's like, well, the, the love has to be more important than, than the distractions. Mm. And Raphael came all the way over from Portugal and then, you know, it's like he made it and then I think Suzanne said when they got out there, she said, now go be quiet. After he flew all the way from <laughs> Portugal. <laughs> now go be quiet. He's probably thinking on the inside, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> His parents are probably saying how to do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. They're happy he had a direction to fly. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it's like this. If what you say is true, then the, everything in our world is not true. So you need to find another place. You need to find your tribe. That's pretty much the same as it's been for all of us. It's what your daughter did. You're going for God. Good. She said, "I want to. I want to be a mom. You go now." Let me be my mom, but go. Mm. <coughs> I like what you're aiming for, but that's not my gig right now. <laughs> yeah. Which is good, when the, when the characters act out all the thoughts, mm. you know, you were like, okay, I will. <laughs> you know, the characters just are acting out every thought, you just have to thank them. You say, you've lost your marbles. Yes, I have. Thank you. <laughs> You're not all there. That's true, I'm not. I'm neither here nor there. <laughs> you have to thank them for, the, for acting out your thoughts and, and bless and say, oh, yes, that's true. Good stuff. Very direct.
feels like to me that everything's become so painful and it's just too unbearable to keep holding on to stuff. So it's like when people have talked about the Course in Miracles and how wonderful it is, that's not really been my experience of it. It's been more painful than um, wonderful because it just brings up so much stuff. But I know that that is, I know that that's the right thing, I really. I know that inside of me. So I guess that was my judgments against you really, David, like thinking like um, on the shows and stuff, it all seems very nice. But it's not hardcore enough for me. You know, is he really is he really doing it? Or is it just you know, we're all here to love each other and that's all wonderful. So I had a lot of judgments even around coming for that for that for that reason. But something was, was drawing me here. And it was like my ego was like, oh, I'm not here to follow anybody. What well, I've got the book and I know that to be true. So why do what why does everybody see me bow down to you? Um, so I was kind of reluctant to that, but something's just said, yeah, just come here. And so coming here, I've seen that this is evoking a lot of stuff, um, which is great, which is what I want. So I guess like my, my, my annoyance was is that you weren't, you, you weren't saying that out, outwardly, telling people like, you know, you need to be ready for this. Are you ready for this? You know, do you really want this? Um, because it's not fun. It's really not fun being undone in my eyes. Um, <clears throat> but I know that it's absolutely what I've got to do because it is just absolutely unbearable to continue on like this. Yeah, it's interesting that Lisa um, says a lot of times if David had told me what I was getting into at the beginning, I would never have come. <laughs> I would have run as far as I could in the opposite direction. It's just, there's just enough to kind of get your foot in the door and then, <laughs> then you go, right. then, then you go kicking and like screaming me. and... <laughs> I was tricked. <laughs> totally, that's why it's like, you tricked me. You <laughs> were manipulating me. Yeah. And yesterday she, she said, come, come and watch this clip with me. And it was this jaguar had its foot caught in, the tra in this trap. And it was, you know, its teeth were down. And it was just, it, it had its foot clamped in a in a tra hunting trap. It was a big jaguar, probably 180 pounds or something. Utah. And it, yeah, southern Utah, south of here, and and it just was, it couldn't move, and it was just snarling. And then these two guys come up to it, and instead of doing what they do in Africa, South Africa with lions, they just, they, they fire a little dart and <laughs> they tranquilize them, and then they open the thing and bring it back. These two guys from Utah were going to go in there without tranquilizing a, this, what was it, like a jaguar? Or? It was cougar. 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 This big cougar, big Jeez, huge like cougar with teeth and everything. These two two guys decided they would just uh, get, the, get the thing out. So one comes in there and they get these like these uh, poles with these circles on them that they can pull to try to, one guy's going to put it over the the cougar's head and the cougar <laughs> bites, he's like, just he's hissing, he bites on it and, and then they try to tighten it around the, the cougar's neck while the other one goes underneath and tries to get a leg <laughs> of the cougar in there. This is a powerful cougar, so, yeah, and the, 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 the guy's holding on, the, cat, the cougar's moving, and he's then they get the leg, get the leg, and this and this and this, and he's wild, and, but, 
in that whole scene, you know, it, yeah, it took quite a lot. I mean, it, the cougar was flipping around and the, the guys were moving all over the place and everything and they were trying to not get eaten. Yeah, by the like cougar, to maneuver. To maneuver. No, there's no tranquilizing. Oh, That's the thing, yeah. I said this, they have smart in South Africa, they tranquilize. He was alive. He was alive. They were trying to do this so with him while the cougar was alive. <laughs> but this was, this is an answer to your question. This is, this is what, this is what it is, like, but, there's, there is, the more willing people are, the more they, they still have to go through intensity to come to the lightness and the joy. But, true empathy is, is to be in alignment because you can't change anyone's mind. You can't do anything for anyone. You only can present a witness of, of a healed mind and then that incentive has to be enough for them to believe that it's possible to do it, and yet no one has a clue, actually, of what they're getting into. And and then you can hear the stories of, of what people, the intensities people have gone through, extreme intensities. Nicholas, just, just this past week, yeah, it's but because because no, but nobody would take a step toward it, you know. And many people are turned away because, you know, they're told how daunting it is. And that, some people may say that's realistic, but actually, you, it's better to present an example of a mind that's changed than it is to try to instruct or, or get a person to do anything. You can't really get anyone to do anything. And there seems to be a lot of turnover. We've had, just like in social services, but who've come and gone and come and gone and they're here, they're here, they're they here, like, they're just gone. Say, oh, I'm here! I'm here! I'm so happy to be here! It's like, okay. It's like a two-part thing where one is exposed to darkness, but then that's just the preliminaries. It's, it's, it's essential, but it's still just the preliminaries. And then the, the release comes from the experience that darkness cannot hide. That's that's where the, the joy, the fun, the lightness, the darkness cannot hide. But that's why the exposing is needed, because it's, the mind is convinced that darkness can hide. Darkness, darkness and light can be hidden. And a world of images can, can be given reality and take over as having meaning. That's what this whole thing is showing. No, darkness cannot hide. That defenses don't work, but they're not necessary. They just seem to work. As long as they seem to work, then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And everything's upside down, so when you go to helpers, you know, we've gone to doctors, psychologists, all kinds of helpers, but no one can help unless they've allowed them themselves to be helped in the ultimate sense. No one can teach beyond their own level of recognition. So there comes a disillusionment with that, where you just search for answers or search for help, and then it starts to dawn, wait a minute, what am I searching for and why do I think they, they have the answers? And it's disillusioning, but then it opens the mind up to an actual awakening of like, oh yeah. I can have that experience within myself, but I don't, I can't find it in the world.